We're going to begin our study of second order systems now. And a second order system is any system that contains two distinct energy storage elements. We're going to begin our study by looking at a mechanical system that's comprised of a spring and a mass that's sliding on a surface uh, with viscous friction. All right, and I want to point out that this sliding surface uh, is something that has like a thin layer of oil or liquid on it. And um, the reason that this is important is that this is viscous friction. And it is different from the dry friction that we have discussed in um, statics and dynamics because viscous friction depends upon, the friction force depends upon the velocity at which the object is traveling. So it's kind of like an air resistance or a fluid resistance. Um, and this is how we're going to be modeling um, most of our systems is using this viscous friction concept uh, for a mechanical system. Um, it may be strange to think about looking at a mechanical system and an electronics course. But uh, the reason that we're doing that is that we will see there are many parallels between a mechanical system and modeling of an electrical system. What we're going to find out is that the mass is similar to the inductor. The resistance is um, similar to the uh, loss, uh, the energy loss due to friction. And the capacitive element um, is, an, is a potential energy storage device, just like the spring is. So um, we're going to develop our second order uh, equation and our second order modeling based on a mechanical system, but with the knowledge that we can transfer that over to looking at uh, electrical systems. OK, so the question that we have here is if this is a fixed wall and we have a spring connecting this mass, and the um, original position of this mass, or the rest position of the mass, uh, when the spring is not stretched or compressed, lies right here at x0, x equals 0. Um, what's going to happen if I displace this mass, if I pull it out this direction, some, uh, some initial displacement, and at time equals 0, I let go of the mass? what's going to happen to the position of the mass. This is analogous to determining what the voltage across this capacitor is going to be when I take a switch that is connected to this voltage source and I suddenly turn that voltage source off and uh, connect just the inductor, resistor, and capacitor together. Um, so again, we'll talk about this analogy, but uh, again, let's go back to this um, to the mechanical system and again say what happens when I release this mass from its non-zero rest, uh, from the non-zero position. How is it going to, how's the position are, uh, going to change with time? Well, uh, the first thing that we would expect with this is that if I release the mass from this initial position, since I have the spring attached and I have this uh, fluid viscous friction on here, the spring is going to exert a force on the mass and cause it to start traveling in the negative x direction. Of course, depending upon the parameters of the spring, how strong the spring is, the size of the mass, and the amount of friction that's present, um, I would expect that it would overshoot the initial position, or the original x0 position, and at that point in time, the spring would be compressed, so it would exert a force in the opposite direction on the mass and go back that direction. All right, so from our experience with springs and masses, we would expect some type of oscillatory behavior where the mass is going to bounce back and forth around the equilibrium position until the viscous friction dissipates uh, all of the uh, energy that's associated with that initial displacement. Okay, so if I were to plot that on a graph, it would look something like this. I would start at some initial um, displacement, and as time progresses after I release it, I would expect some sort of decaying uh, cosine type of oscillation right, that looks like that. So that's one potential um, response behavior that we would see for the position of this mass. Now there's another one that we have to be aware of for second order systems. And the other one is what happens if this spring is very weak or there's a large viscous friction force relative to the mass of the system. All right, if I, if I imagine that, the other case that I could see is if I displace this mass and let it go at time zero, either the friction force is going to be very high or the spring force is going to be very weak, and I can imagine this mass just slowly sliding back to its original position without overshooting um, the uh, initial uh, equilibrium position.
So the other response case that we could have for a second order system looks like this. It's going to start at the, non, uh, the um, initial position and it is going to decrease, sort of exponentially approach the equilibrium position. Right, so we have two potential cases uh, that we have to worry about and all of that's going to depend upon the strength of the um, spring constant, the magnitude of the mass, and how much viscous friction, which is a uh, lowercase c, is how we'll represent it in this course. All right, actually it's going to turn out that we actually need to worry about three possible response scenarios for, um, for a second order system. We have one that will oscillate, we have one that will have a slow approach back to the equilibrium position, and there's actually a third, but it's um, primarily a theoretical case, but in that third case we could have a very fast rapid approach to the equilibrium position and then it's going to um, it's going to uh, reach that equilibrium position as quickly as possible without doing any overshoots, without any oscillations, and um, this is sort of the borderline case between the oscillation case and the non-oscillation case, which is called the critically damped case. So we're going to have three cases that we need to um, to be able to mathematically model and figure out how to um, to model a system, a second order system that has two energy storage elements. And that's what we're going to talk about over the next uh, few weeks here.